Parents, my name is Dr. Tony Ebel, and I am a neurologically focused pediatric chiropractor. Now, that's a heck of a description, right? A lot of people don't even know that chiropractors, one, focus on the nervous system, and two, work with kids and neurodevelopment and their health. And the one thing chiropractors work with is the entire focus of this video, something called subluxation. Say it slow like that or really fast, subluxation. And it's like, what the heck is that? I've never heard of that. And that's why I want to make this video. That's why I hope you watch this thing all the way through and share like crazy because getting you to know what subluxation is, especially as it relates to your child, is the number one missing link in all of healthcare. And I'm going to go through the science and I'm going to go through every element of this, but I want you to pay no attention really to the word itself. And instead, I want you to track with me on three things you're going to learn about subluxation today. Number one, what the heck is it? And how is it that this one simple yet crazy powerful thing is really linked to so many many challenges, so many health issues, so many conditions in kids, which means when we flip it on the other side, which is exactly what we're going to talk about, how to get rid of subluxation after you understand what it is, how can getting rid of it help so many different things? How do kids get such vast results through neurologically focused pediatric care that focuses on subluxation? Well, this video is going to teach you that first thing. The second thing we got to teach you if we're going to talk about subluxation is what causes it. We're going to talk about stress during pregnancy, birth trauma. We're going to talk about toxins, but we're going to talk about toxins in a way that no one else has really talked to you about. We're not going to get into gut and inflammation. We're going to talk exactly about how toxins get directly into the nervous system, the central and autonomic nervous system, and they ca cause the nervous system to go haywire and get stressed out. And that's what subluxation is. We'll get to that in a minute. And the third thing is perhaps the most important thing with the video, get you to find out does my kid have it? Is subluxation a part of our story? Is subluxation getting my child's nervous system stressed out, out of balance, and holding us back from having our kiddo heal, get healthy, stay healthy. Let's get into this. So first off, before I switch to the iPad, we're going to go through this with a visual. We've got a digital version of a poster that exists in all of our offices in the PX Docs network, which is a network of neurologically focused, subluxation-based pediatric chiropractors. I know, it's a mouthful, but don't worry. Just because it takes us, I think it goes hand in hand. It takes us a long time to describe what we do, but man, do we get an incredible larger, bigger amount of results than a standard chiropractor as well. So I think the descriptors, the adjectives are, are, are worthy of that. But here's the deal with subluxation. It truly is the missing link in all of healthcare. Now, what I love about the momentum or the, dry, the dramatic shift that's happening in healthcare right now is I love that parents of my generation, our generation, are massively going towards natural health first. So we're not necessarily so inclined to just give our kids a fever reducer, an antibiotic, an inhaler, a stimulant medication, a psychoactive medication. Because of just the wiring that's always in us parents, we always want to know what's causing our kids illness. Now, getting to root causes and actually diving deep into the nervous system and the physiology and the biology of what actually causes a kid or person to get sick is not at all the business of medicine. The business of medicine is give something a diagnosis based upon symptoms and give it a drug, give it a medication, treat it and chase the symptoms. And so parents of today, we're not necessarily in love with that model anymore. So we're shifting moving towards this natural health care model. Now, when you get into natural health care, and I bet you're in just a few Facebook groups that have crunchy, granola, holistic, natural health care in them, right? I know if your child has autism, you may be in a bunch of groups and you're learning about all these different things. Or if they have seizures, you're in these groups and you're learning about different natural health, non-pharmaceutical, non-drug things. I love that. That's why I want you to watch this whole stinking video on subluxation because it's the one thing that links everything together. And it's going to give you so many answers and so much explanations. Like, I know it's a nerdy, weird word, but my goodness, it'll change your life when you hang with me through this video and you'll watch the whole thing and you really understand what subluxation is, what it does, and how to get rid of it because subluxation is the number one missing link because it starts with stress on the nervous system. So what I want to start off with before I go to the iPad and show you and teach you the elements of subluxation is it's all about the nervous system. And the nervous system is the master control system of the gut and of the immune system, of the motor system. So when families I meet in clinical practice or working through this platform, we find out when they're hunting down natural health root causes, they're getting so close when they start to work on the gut or they improve the immune system or they're doing movement-based therapies, motor planning, speech, PT, OT. They're getting so 
close to the true inner root cause missing link of getting their kiddos healthy. And that's awesome because when you add this into everything takes off. So the first thing I want you to know is the missing link that's called subluxation is because the missing link or the master control of our health is really in our brain and our nervous system. It's the nervous system that controls every other tissue, cell, and organ system in the body. And that's where we start with that. Then we'll get into what causes subluxation, birth trauma. If we talk about one negative tough event that is the most overlooked but detrimental challenge in all of healthcare that we're not doing enough about at all, it's birth intervention and birth trauma. And we'll link that up. And then for those of you that are really, really, really nerdy, you got to watch this all the way through because we're going to talk about things like vagus nerve and dysautonomia. If you think subluxation is the only nerdy word we're going to talk about and you love nerdy stuff, you're in for a treat. And if you don't love nerdy stuff, if you're like, no science, please just get right to it. Don't worry. I will take my Iowa farmer English and convert and translate all of this neurological healthcare language for you. All right. So we teach subluxation. So I'm going to actually write the word of the day at the top. Pardon my bad handwriting through all my videos. I do my best to write fast slash a little bit legible. Yeah. So subluxation is best described visually and sequentially via this gas versus brake pedal poster we created for our practices years ago. Now, first off, visually, I'm going to show you how easy it is to understand that what subluxation does is it shifts the nervous system too much into this gas pedal sympathetic response. So right away, we have an S word, subluxation, not the other one. And then we go right into a sympathetic stress response, okay? So the first thing you can see with the gas versus brake pedal is what I want you to know is subluxation means stress stuck on. So when you, if you've been to chiropractic at all and you maybe heard the word subluxation, if you do a Google search that takes you to videos other than this one, the context around subluxation may take you to another S word that is kind of hidden in here called the spine. Now we'll get into this. The spine, really better described as the neurospinal system and conduit, the nerves, the muscles, the ligaments, the neurological soft tissues called the meninges, the dura mater. I know we're nerdy, but it's really the covering around the nervous system that protects it and helps its communication and that. The spine is simply a neurological conduit. The spine is an access point into the central nervous system because that's how God designed us. The skull and the spine protect the central or autonomic nervous system. So what we're talking about with subluxation is when stress gets a hold of our kiddos or gets a hold of us, we shift the entire nervous system into this gas pedal, fight or flight, sustained or stuck sympathetic response. So whenever you hear subluxation going forward from this video on, don't even worry about the spinal or the physical or the biomechanical component. That's just one piece of subluxation, this misalignment, fixation, physical component. The real story of subluxation is that it creates stress stuck on within the sympathetic fight or flight nervous system. So what we can see with the gas versus brake pedal, if you kind of follow that green to blue to red RPM tack looking like thing from a car, is all of a sudden our kiddos are too revved up, too wound up, maybe we're too revved up, too wound up, What does that look like? We'll jump all the way to the bottom. We're going to jump through and and across this thing the whole time. What that looks like in a little baby, a stressed out, sympathetic, dominant kiddo baby is colicky. They can't sleep. They can't nurse. They can't fall asleep. They can't poop. They can't do these things. So that's colic reflux. What does that look like later on? The ears get jammed up. They get stuck. They can't breathe. They have allergies. They have gut issues. What does that look like is they grow into ADHD, anxiety, autism. So subluxation is the literal missing link into this reality. Kids don't grow out of colic. Kids don't grow out of ear infections. Kids don't grow out of tantrums and meltdowns and sleep difficulties as two-year-olds and three-year-olds. They grow into other neurological challenges later on. The medical system just skips over the nervous system and keeps giving you, oh, your child has that, your child has that, here's a doctor for that, here's a drug for that, here's a doctor for that, here's a test for that, here's a doctor for that, here's a drug for that. 
And they tell you when your child's colicky and your gut says, something's wrong with my baby. They tell you when your two-year-old is melting down, every time you go to Target or go to the store or go, you're a three-year-old or four-year-old or five-year-old, every time they go to preschool, they get in trouble or your grade schooler can't sit still and learn and they can't fall asleep and they can't poop and they can't get over a cold and an illness. They say early on, don't worry, they'll grow out of it. And what subluxation, this poster and really this science and this neurology is going to show you is they don't grow out of it, they grow into it. But the second thing we need to talk about about with subluxation is what causes it. So if it is that really, truly one size catch all detrimental stress inducing thing within our nervous system, where does it come from? What causes subluxation? See, as chiropractors, we are obsessed with cause all the way through. So in my work early on, I knew and I learned about the neurological influence that a chiropractor can have on every patient. And I learned that subluxation has far more to do with stuck bones or misaligned bones in the spine. And it has everything to do with an imbalanced, stressed out, interfered with nervous system that leads to too much sympathetic response. At the end of this, we'll talk about how important it is to get the brake pedal, because if you have too much gas pedal, you got too little brake pedal, rest, digest, socialization, emotional regulation, but what causes it? And so when we started taking case histories on kiddos, my first specialty in care in pediatrics has really been autism and then epilepsy. My child suffered a traumatic birth, Oliver, suffered a traumatic birth, and we were told guaranteed he's going to have autism, guaranteed he's going to have epilepsy, guaranteed he's going to have cerebral palsy. Now, because of his physically, let me get that out of the way a second. I circled the word physical and I don't want to. Because of his physically traumatic birth, so Oliver suffered a very physically traumatic birth to his neck, his spine, and his nervous system, his spine, and his brainstem, his nervous system from birth. So the single biggest missing link in healthcare is the single biggest overlooked thing that triggers subluxation and the sympathetic response, and that is birth intervention. So birth intervention most commonly creates birth injury or trauma to the cranium, to the upper neck, to the thoracics, to this very delicate, because what can a baby not do in the beginning moments, weeks of life? They can't hold up their own head and neck. They can't protect the motor, physical, structural system. They haven't gone through those motor milestones yet and going through the birth canal or going through a C-section, but going through birth that is an emergency C-section, a vacuum extraction, a forceps contraction, or an induction is a very traumatic experience physically for the child, emotionally for mom and the family, and that leaves its mark. So subluxation's biggest causative factor that most parents don't know about because you think of chiropractic as something physical, structural, chiropractic, the spine, back pain, neck pain, neck issues, shoulder issues. Oh, that's because I had an injury. That's Well, there's a physical injury in so many kids' births that is being completely overlooked, completely swept under the rug, and it's the biggest missing link in healthcare because that physical birth trauma, especially to the brainstem via those birth interventions, is a hugely traumatic trigger of sympathetic response. And subluxation means stuck on. The earlier a child goes through these stressors, physical, we'll get to chemical and emotional next, the more it gets stuck in their nervous system because the nervous system is still developing. So exposure to stress at any part of life is no good, but exposure to physical, chemical, or emotional stress early and often in life is what we call the perfect storm. And that's also what we're really going through with this poster because the perfect storm is the story of subluxation that shows up early in a child's life, gets stuck, shifts their nervous system to fight or flight, shuts down the brake pedal and the vagus nerve. This whole shift is called a condition called dysautonomia, which means you can't be in growth and protection at the same time. So a child can't be on the gas pedal, fight or flight, stressed out, and on the brake pedal, eating, sleeping, pooping, moving, emotionally regulating. So the brake pedal is controlled by the vagus nerve, and that is a nerve that comes from the upper neck. So the number one thing that a physically traumatic birth does is it injures and interferes with the function of the vagus nerve while at the same time 
creating that sympathetic stress response. So it's one plus one equals 11 in a negative direction. And children today have overstimulated fight or flight sympathetic responses. That's called subluxation. And they have understimulated vagus nerve, parasympathetic rest, relaxation, development tone within their nervous system. That's called subluxation too. So I don't want to get too far down the other ones because I really wanted to make the missing link about the missing link, which is really birth intervention, but toxins and emotional stress. So we live in a more toxic society than ever before. Kids are given medications and other things earlier than ever before. They're going to inhale them. They're going to ingest them. They're going to get them. They're going to get exposure to toxins more quantity, more early when their nervous system is more sensitive, and that's going to shift their nervous system to fight or flight. And then the meltdowns come, and then the tantrums come, and then the hyperactivity comes, and then the anxiety comes, and then the sensory processing disorder comes. So now it becomes a vicious psycho because a child who is wound up and stressed out all the time stimulates their sympathetic nerves and nervous system even more. So what subluxation is, is a neurological hard wiring. So the nervous system gets shifted via these stressors early on in life. We call them the three T's, physical, chemical. So traumas, physical, toxins, chemical, thoughts, emotional. I skipped over another important third T, maternal distress. So the fact that we disempower and we don't support our moms and we scare the heck out of them during the entire prenatal period. And there's more anxiety and there's more stress on mom's nervous system, which is then connected to via the umbilical cord, which is the power cord, which is the electrical developmental system for the baby's brain and nervous system. So, so many babies today are being born significantly and severely subluxated. Now, subluxation is a term you might have heard about for the very first time in this video. Maybe you're reading the article that this video is a part of. Subluxation is the one thing you want to learn more about. The truth is medicine still blames genetics and bad luck. And genetics has very little to do with the development of just especially chronic health issues like we're dealing with at insanely unfortunate, heartbreaking high levels in kids today. The nervous system is the system that controls the gut and the immune and the motor system as well. So if you've been working on diet changes, detoxes, chelation, supplements, vitamins, essential oils to get the gut and the immune system better. If you've been working on PT and OT and movement-based therapies and speech therapy to get the muscular and motor system better, you are getting awesomely moving in the right direction. But to finish and complete the healing process for your kiddo, you got to find out, are they subluxated? Did they go through some or all of those three T's and the perfect storm? And if they did, if, if the pregnancy was stressful and a lot going on, if birth was physically traumatic, if they were colicky, constipated, refluxy, chronic ear infections, croup, RSV, um, gut issues, immune issues, allergies, asthma, tantrums, meltdowns, sensory, sleep disturbances, a lot of different symptoms are the expression of different physiological effects, if you will, of the same thing. Subluxation, sympathetic, fight or flight nervous system shifted and stuck on, which is the same thing as saying the brake pedal, the vagus nerve, the healing, restoration side of the child's nervous system is shut down. Here's the good news. I know this wasn't a super good news filled video just yet. It is now. We can find it and we can take care of it. Neurologically focused pediatric chiropractors are a vastly different kind of chiropractor. It's a vastly different approach than healthcare. Pediatricians, chasing symptoms, providing medications. Natural health doctors, rock stars, we work hand in hand with them, PTs, OTs, working on the gut, working on inflammation, working on the motor system. Every single time a child gets out of this subluxated, sympathetic dominant state, guess what's gonna go in easier? Diet changes. Your child's going to be a better sleeper, a less picky eater. They're going to take their vitamins. They're going to absorb their vitamins. They're going to use their, their good diet. They're going to respond to speech, PT, OT, ABA even better if they're not locked into this fight or flight stuck 
gas pedal subluxated state. So the good news is we can find it and we can do something about it. The way we find it is two parts. I'm going to put the links in with this video where you can learn more about what we call our PX doc clinical approach. So the first thing we do is we dive into your child's case history and we're looking for listening for clues to when their nervous system would have got off track, when that subluxation and stress would have been triggered. The more they went through and the earlier they went through it, the more we know we've got some work to do with neurologically focused chiropractic, but we don't have to just listen for clues. We can actually run what's called our insight scans. Now, this technology is incredible. This is unbelievable modernized technology that is sensory in nature, meaning we can actually measure and quantify the amount of subluxation or sympathetic dominance and that dysautonomia, which is just a term for is the child's nervous system out of balance? If so, how much? We can quantify it. And if so, where? We can find where within the neurospinal system these subluxations are. So what makes our PX Docs network and our practice here locally, if you're watching this and you're within the where I practice, it makes it different because we not only know that subluxation is the missing link, but we can actually find it. And then we make safe, gentle, easy adjustments to actually decrease or release the stress on that sympathetic nervous system. And then we, at the same time, with the same adjustments, we're activating the vagus nerve. We're activating the parasympathetic. The first side effect of an adjustment is the child sleeps better. They move better. They digest better. Their immune system gets stronger. And then you get deeper into the nervous system and into the brain, and they start to have better focus, better emotional regulation, better behavior, better decision-making, better focus. There is so much change that can happen through neurologically focused chiropractic and taking care of subluxation because when you get into the nervous system and get it back in balance and get it working well again, and the earlier we start, the better that goes, every other system gets better. So also, when I finish this video up, I can answer the question that a lot of people ask like, hey, Okay, I've been watching your videos, I've been reading your articles, I've been doing all this research on pediatric chiropractic, and I got one question. It sounds too good to be true. How can one thing make all these different changes? Because in my previous journey with healthcare, I've got a gastroenterologist who only does that. I've got an ENT who only does that. I've got a neurologist who doesn't really do anything for us other than medications. I've got all these specialists. Yeah, that's why we've got the sickest kids of any generation ever, because we've stopped looking at root causes and we've stopped looking inside the most important part of the, of the entire health and healing system, which is the nervous system. So the missing link to get your child better is probably the missing practitioner on the team. And that's a neurologically focused subluxation based pediatric chiropractor. I'd love to send you in this direction after this video. Learn more watch more, click on the links that talk about our clinical process, read up about the insight scans, read up on the articles on our website about the vagus nerve, about dysautonomia, about pediatric chiropractic and the influence we can make. We've got tons of articles that are a little bit more condition based. So if your child has colic or autism or epilepsy, you can read articles that bring subluxation into that conversation. We are here for you to find more hope find more answers, and then get the action steps. And those action steps are get into a local PX doc office to get those scans. You'll actually see they work very hand in hand with that gas versus brake pedal poster, where we can measure the tension, quantify that sympathetic dominance, and really, really get to the root cause of why your child is struggling so much. Subluxation is the one thing that is missing from so many kids and so many families' healthcare plans, which means pediatric, neurologically focused chiropractic is that missing link, that missing move. We're here to get you that information, to get you those action steps. Any questions you have about subluxation, about the nervous system, about your child, put them in the comments or send us a DM. Anybody you know who this video could help, please share it. Please tag them in this video. We are here to help. We'll keep doing it. We'll see you on the next video. See you in the next article. God bless. Be well.